Okay, I think we can start now. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the University of Moscow. Uh, my name is Anastasia Panova. I'm a research assistant in the lab. Uh, today is the seventh lecture in the series of nine uh, entitled Ergativity in East Caucasian. Uh, it will be given by Professor Yakov Sistelets. Uh, the lecture will go uninterrupted, followed by a question period. You may send your questions via the Zoom chat or YouTube live chat. Uh, at the end of the talk, I will share my screen with a full list of questions for the speaker to answer them. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce Yakov Tistelets, uh, the head of the Department of Caucasian Languages of the Institute of Linguistics, Russian Academy of Sciences, and a professor uh, at the Center for Linguistic Typology at the Institute of Linguistics of the Russian State University for the Humanities. Uh, uh, is uh, grammatical relationships, grammatical asymmetries, anaphora, and reflexivity. Uh, his habilitation thesis uh, is entitled Grammatical Hierarchy and uh, the Typology of a Sentence. Uh, Yakov is one of the most authoritative experts uh, in the syntax uh, of Caucasian languages. He has performed extensive fieldwork on languages uh, belonging to all three indigenous families of the Caucasus, Kartvelian, Northwest Caucasian, East Caucasian, uh, and has authored many publications devoted to the syntax of these languages. Yakov is also an expert uh, in the syntax of the Russian language, and an author of the textbook Introduction to General Syntax. Uh, and and this, this is an essential reading in syntactic courses of a range of linguistics programs uh, in Russia. Uh, today, Yakov will give us a lecture on ergativity in East Caucasian. Uh, Yakov Georgievich, uh, the floor is all yours. Uh, Nastya, thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, my topic for tonight is Ergativity in East Caucasian. I'll show them in the file. So is it okay? Yes. Okay, Ergativity in, in the East Caucasian languages. Now, ergativity is a phenomenon which was first noticed uh, by linguists uh, uh, by the middle of the 19th century. Uh, it is um, a, specific, um, a specific system of alignment, uh, which, um, which, looks, uh, which looked so unusual from the point of view of, um, the Indo of most Indo-European languages. Uh, for example, in avar with an intransitive verb, the C, um, uh, as an example, one uh, subject in, uh, in the unmarked case, uh, very much like nominative, and the verb which uh, uh, agrees in um, number and gender with the subject, like vasvussana, masculine singular, and yes, you, uh, the boy came back. Uh, yes, you, Sana, the girl came back, uh, feminine uh, singular, uh, the prefixes and verb agree with the, with the subject. But with, it, uh, with the transitive verb, uh, something occurs uh, which, um, which is less usual. When the uh, subject with transitive verbs is uh, marked with, uh, some sort of oblique case, uh, vasas uh, for uh, the us ending for uh, for the uh, for the masculine class, yasash ending for the uh, feminine class, and the verb uh, agrees with a direct object, which is uh, in the unmarked case very much the nominative. Vasas yasvetsana the boy praised the girl. Yasash vasvetsana the girl praised the boy. Now, same in Archie, when an intransitive verb, the situation is basically the same. Both languages are uh, typo typologically very similar and genetically related, and both display 
the same sort of alignment, the ergative versus absolutive construction. Dia, father, uh, went away. Vakti, bova dakti, mother went away. Uh, ver and de in the verb are prefixes of gender number agreement. Mm, with a transitive verb, uh, verb uh, however, bova mu, subject is bova mu in the oblique case. Uh, dia mu, father, in the oblique case, mother led father or mother took father with herself. Buva mu dia ovka, dia mu buva orka. The verb, the transitive verb, uh, agrees in gender and number with a direct object. The direct object is in the unmarked case. Uh, so this is the phenomenon of ergativity, which distinguishes between absolutive and negative forms. Absolutive, uh, which may be a case, a controller of agreement or whatever, uh, is something that marks the subject of an intransitive verb, direct object of a transitive verb. Ergative is something which marks uh, su uh, the subject of a transitive verb. Uh, absolutive uh, in the in the East uh, in the East Caucasian languages, absolutive controls the number gender agreement at the clause level, which we have seen in the in the verb. Uh, it's Marina Chumakina's uh, lecture last year, or Maria Polinsky's forthcoming lecture on December 29 about that. Uh, other uses of ergative uh, are very much like uh, uses of object uh, um, of the uh, uh, of uh, case for oblique objects. It's instrument like Bagwalal Beswandi Kikwani. He saw it through with a knife. Beswand with a knife with ergative. It may be cause like an uh, like an archi yat and he blushed with shame. Shame is an ergative. Or it may be time, like in our uh, example number seven, so one day, uh, in one day, uh, at one day. It's the, um, the same negative form. On the other hand, other uses of, of, the, absol of the absolutive case are typical phenominative uh, for languages uh, with nominative versus uh, accusative alignment. Uh, which is uh, which is very interesting by itself that absolutive so much resembles nominative and nominative accusative uh, in languages with nominative accusative system of alignment. Uh, it may be nominal predicate like in Sakur Maharam uh, is a good Zurna player, Yugna Zurnachi, uh, example eight. Yugna Zurnachi is an absolutive. It's the case of the nominal uh, nominal uh, predicate uh, existential and possessive clauses it's something like well it's uh, very difficult to um, very difficult to to see whether it's a subject or object it's uh, something like kasbek uh, genitive kasbek has a talent uh, hunar the talent is an absolutive uh, absolutive is the case for vocatives uh, in these languages, like example from Bishtanam, but then kid his lakna, daughter, it is morning already. Kid, uh, daughter is an absolutive, it's a uh, vocative form. Appositions and parts of compounds are also, uh, to the extent uh, they are case forms, they, may, they can be regarded as case forms and not merely as stems. Uh, they are something like uh, they resemble absolutives. It like kvarshi isho butes, the genitive form of a complex noun isho bu, mother father, which means parents, parents house. So we see that uh, isho uh, is the is in the unmarked form, which uh, which coincides with the absolutive. Okay, so uh, on the next uh, on the next slide you see the um, the diagram, which is very common for typologists that uh, present the ergative versus absolutive alignment difference. A is the uh, ergative subject. O is the absolutive object, uh, the object of the transitive verb, direct object. S is the intransitive uh, verbs, absolutive subject. So uh, this is uh, what is uh, marked with absolutive or unmarked with absolutive. And A is what is marked with ergative. 
Realist approach to the ergativity independently by uh, all the researchers who uh, first uh, met, uh, for, first uh, encountered this phenomenon in, in various languages in the world in the 19th century, the late 19th century. It was, uh, it must be passive. So uh, Piotr Usler, the founder of the scientific approach uh, of uh, North Caucasian languages, uh, author uh, who authored uh, outstanding uh, grammatical descriptions of many of these languages. Uh, he uh, suggested the idea that, uh, well, um, the transitive verbs in these languages can only be used in passive. And uh, what is peculiar is that these passive forms had no special passive marking. So he, uh, the first mention of this theory is in his Chechen grammar in uh, 1888. In Chechen, there are no active transitive verbs, only middle and passive ones. And the next year, he um, repeated the same view in his uh, brilliant description of Avar. In Avar, there is no active verb to love, but only the passive to be loved. So it's Usler's approach. And uh, in the same way, ergative was recognized as passive in classical Tibetan, uh, in Tibetan family von Gabelens, 1861, in Greenlandic Eskimo uh, by Talbitzer, in Kashmiri in the Iranian by Grierson, in Basque, isolated by Schuckert. And what is remarkable for all, uh, for all these linguists that they adopted uh, a very interesting non-paradigmatic understanding of passive uh, with no active counterpart. In fact, they, uh, they were forced to conclude that in these languages, there can be passive constructions without active counterparts. Uh, in fact, some passive constructions have none. For example, the analytical resultative passive in Russian, uh, example 12, if Petsch is so forth is Bolsio Shortkrit, uh, in fact, there is no, um, there is no um, active counterpart to this construction, but basically when linguists mean passive, uh, they usually mean uh, active versus passive uh, pairs, of course. And uh, the radical turning point uh, occurred in 1928, when Adolf Dier, uh, a famous also a famous researcher of the East Caucasian languages, published his Einführung in das Studium der Kaukasischen Sprachen, Introduction to the Study of the Caucasian Languages. And uh, so this is the famous passage coining the new term. It's probably the, well, it's, it's, it's uh, agreed that it's the first time when the new term, term was used. Man sieht, das Problem ist äußerst verwickelt und ich erkläre mich außerstande, es zu lösen. Statt von passiver Konstruktion zu sprechen, werde ich die Ausdrücke Ergativkonstruktion und Nominativkonstruktion sprechen. It is obvious that the problem is extremely complex and I declare myself unable to solve it. Instead of speaking of passive construction, I will use the terms ergative construction, the logical subject is the ergative and nominative construction. Uh, a really rare example in the history of linguistics when a successful and still generally accepted concept has been introduced on the basis of intuition alone. And the author explicitly stated that he could not substantiate it with analysis. Deere claims in fact that the construction is not passive because it is obvious that it is not passive. And his view was quickly, uh, quickly Mm, adopted by uh, other researchers uh, of ergativity and the Caucasian languages. The term absolutive case occurs first probably in Talbitzer's work mentioned above. Uh, further, uh, the lack of voice oppositions and of passive in particular is, uh, was, uh, was mentioned as one of the, was often mentioned as one of the fundamental typological characteristics of this Caucasian, no passive. Okay, isn't it passive after all? Maybe Usler was right. It seems that Deere and his many followers are right. And Usler was wrong. Uh, it is not. It is not passive. Uh, although, uh, of course, it's a matter of definition, but according to 
any reasonable definition of passive, uh, what we see in uh, East Caucasian is, is, is not passive. By most definitions, B is a passive counterpart of A and A an active counterpart of B. If A and B denote the same situation, suppose we understand what it means, denote the same situation. And what is subject in A is not subject in B. In an active versus passive pair, the correspondence between roles and grammatical relations is switched. Like in the pair, the enemy destroyed the city versus the city was destroyed by the enemy. Okay, so there is no active counterpart to the ergative construction in East Caucasian. Usler uh, was the first to, uh, to, look at, to look for active counterpart of his passive construction in East Caucasian and he, and he found none. And uh, we also find, uh, uh, can find uh, no, uh, no uh, active counterpart. So it is not passive from this point of view. A different approach to voice, like in, uh, in the functional works on voice by Shibatani, Fox, Hopper, Langacker, and others, is that passive is a peripheral construction in which agent is defocused, that is, obtains a less prominent rank in this course. Uh, the Langacker puts, puts it as the agent's identity is unknown or irrelevant, uh, which is a rather, a rather controversial. Um, Characteristics, but uh, characteristic. But anyway, in East Caucasian, the participant marked with ergative is not defocused in this sense or in any other sense. It it is not uh, it is not something which um, is shifted in the background. For example, in Avar, uh, there are two equally uh, just one example from Avar, two equally prominent characters in a folk tale, wolf and fox, but it's a jindir and chi. When Wolf asked where its cubs were, Fox said that they were at its place. Wolf asked, Fox said. Wolf and Fox are two uh, characters of a folktale, and both uh, are marked with um, negative whenever it is necessary to, uh, for them to be used as uh, subjects with transitive verbs, like... Uh, ask or say in this case, in, in the case of example 13. There is, no, uh, uh, there is no shift into the background or whatever uh, uh, operation which uh, might have something with the information structure. So it is not passive according to the, to the second approach either. Okay. Moreover, in at least some of the East Caucasian language, there is a peripheral passive uh, in question marks, uh, I'm sorry, in um, quotation marks here, because I'm not sure it is passive. It just looks like one. Uh, if it is passive, it's a passive counterpart to ergative. Like in Avar, dikha vech kwanan ana, something like, um, it happens somehow that I add, add an apple. It's a construction which with a converb of the verb, transitive verb like eat, and the verb go, which is which is light verb or semi auxiliary verb here. So it means something like it, it can be used with ergative. Ergative is uh, out here. It's uh, start form ergative in example 14. So it means it happens somehow that I add, add the apple uh, with um, uh, with intransitive verbs, uh, possessive can be used as denoting something happened because of somebody. So um, the, uh, literally it means something like apple was eaten because of me, but uh, since it means in fact that I had the apple, it looks very much like passive. This, uh, this construction uh, um, has been uh, discovered very, uh, very lately, just uh, 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 very likely it wasn't known since Magomedov's work of, uh, um, twen uh, of uh, 2006. And this construction needs further investigation, but even if it is passive, it is a passive counterpart to ergative. Uh, ergative absolute construction, not something uh, to which Negative absolutive construction might be a passive counterpart, of course. 
Now, uh, deviations from the equitative models, which is uh, which is fairly consistent in the East Caucasian languages. In fact, uh, uh, East Caucasian languages, most of them are very consistently ergative uh, in their um, uh, gender number agreement and uh, case marking. But there are some some remarkable deviations. One is ergative with complex and transitive verbs complex intransitives. The verbal vocabulary expands mainly via combinations of non-inflected, often borrowed elements with light semi-auxiliary verbs with meanings like do, be, become, give, bring, leave, say, etc., and so on. The resulting meaning is sometimes compositional and sometimes idiomatic. And so logical and grammatical integration of the non-inflected part and the light verb is different. It varies. And it varies not only across languages, it varies, uh, it sometimes uh, very, is very, uh, is various in one single language. Uh, this is the usual way of, uh, for example, of borrowing new verbs like liquidirovats uh, from Russian, liquidate, which is liquidirovat gabize, liquidirovat do in avar, for example. Uh, morphological derivations like avar kwach cold, kwachaze feel cold. A flower, a has a blossom, Maria, or rather they are less noticeable for some reason. Uh, regular um, um, morphological derivations of new verbs from non verbs uh, occurs, but uh, it is uh, somehow less um, perspicuous than uh, complex verbs are. So, ergative with complex verbs, uh, uh, like 15, says hokmu decision judgment, boda do, hokmu boda pass judgment, lesgi azad free hun become, azad hun free oneself, archi shan water as do, shan as swim, which is the idiomatic, uh, doing water means uh, swimming. And uh, the complex shan as behaves like an intransitive verb. Uh, but with transitive light verbs, ergative is used. So in Archie, it's 16, Zari, Shan, Arshi, E. I'm swimming. I'm doing water, literally. Uh, and uh, to my knowledge, it hasn't been uh, thoroughly studied in Archie, but in other languages, it can be seen that grammatical and phonological integration of, of the uh, non-inflected part and the light verb can can be very can be very significant so it really behaves like like an intransitive verb uh, let us see in Leski, for example from uh zari the kirimov's work 17 rusha hurikar harulpus azurizva uh the girl cooks food every day it's okay uh hazur yizva uh, making ready, uh, doing ready, something uh, means, means cook in this context. But uh, hazur ready and the yizva does cannot be separated uh, in linear in linear order. Uh, you cannot insert every day uh, between them. So 17b, rushahfirekar hazur har yukuz yizva is ungrammatical. Uh, with partly incorporated absolutive, uh, absolutive, uh, becomes invisible for at least for some syntactic, uh, for some syntax, because like uh, uh, example 18 in, in Lesgi, Malari sal rugavuna, uh, the cattle ravaged or turned to dust the vegetable garden. Vegetable garden is the direct object, it's in absolutive, but dust in, in, is also in absolutive. Rug is the absolutive form. There are two absolutives or two direct objects like two levels of, uh, so rugavuna is uh, something like doing dust, making dust of something. And it's very much like uh, due to the phonological and grammatical integration, the rugavuna is a, in transit, is a transitive verb, which has, um, uh, which is employed in a transitive construction with ergative malary and uh, absolutive a sal vegetable god in this in this case. Ideophonic verbs show a great deal of phonological and grammatical integration, like combinations with both, say, in Archi. Uh, the first part is uh, some ideophonic morpheme, 
there are fully integrated stems which which behave like intransitives fully like this boss boss hubus drink drink is transitive by the way and shabos sneeze uh, the diphonic element uh, isn't taken into uh, isn't taken into account in syntax. So, uh, nineteen tant these were a b buzzer. The b is an absolutive, although say is a transitive verb. Uh, Twelve, uh, I'm sorry, twenty. Zari di hubu. I add the sub hubu is uh, hubu is uh, I said who literally. It's a transitive verb. Sub is an absolutive. Zari is negative. Uh, Kibrik lists uh, eight less integrated stems like Tlich bos his or tubus spit, which behave in such a way as if the non inflected part were a real absolutive because they, uh, they take negative subject. So it's like 21, yat, yat, elisa, tlich bo, the snake hissed at me. It's uh, the snake is an negative. Ideophonic verbs in luck with an animate, uh, with an animate argument, uh, they take negative, like chitul uh, mavakunni, the cat uh, me me out. With an inanimate, uh, inanimate argument, they take absolutive, like granata per kukunni, the grenade explode. Same in Bestam with an with an animate argument, it's ergative. Ist i hitzloyo, brother sneezed, brother is animate. With an inanimate argument, it's absolute. For kot intloyo, the coin jingled. Oko is inanimate, so it's in absolute. Same as in luck. Uh, we cannot say that complex verbs are used only to uh, enlarge. Uh, for, for new borrowings, uh, of course, it's uh, uh, um, because there are obliterated elements that occur only as stems of complex verbs. Uh, they denote nothing. They, they cannot be used as uh, separate words in these languages. Like Riga Bas in Archi 26, find nobody knows what Rig means. Hvarshi Reru Ara, Ara is race. Rego are is rejoice and Rego doesn't exist as a separate work. In luck, Valk Uchin sway real to say Valk Tergavun in Lesgi, doing Terg is ruin, to ruin something, but Terg is, is not, a, is no, there is no independent word, free word like uh, Terg. Okay. Uh, there are examples of split S alignment system in uh, East Caucasian. Like split S in uh, split S is when uh, within transitive verbs uh, the subject agent uh, takes the agent form and the subject patient takes the patient form. This occurs with first and second person pronouns, uh, with which with them the nak prefix or negative denotes agent and absolutive and marked absolutive is patient. So in Batsby uh, thirty so voje I fell involuntarily. And as voje, I fell deliberately. Okay, split S in Tabasaran is, uh, is better known. It was discovered by Alexander Magometov in the in the fifth in the nineteen fifties. Uh, it it occurs with person number agreement. Uh, cases and gender number agreement in Tabasaran are negative, but uh, split S person number agreement in Tabasaran uh, is. Um, uh, occurs with best number agreement, it's active, inactive. Uh, so R is uh, for um, suffixes or clitics which denote um, uh, first and second person in this case, but uh, other persons of, of the first and second, uh, uh, other forms of first and second person too. So Hurtzwura Zavu, I beat you, Zavu, I you. Well, uh, with um, patience, Alda Kurazu, I fall down, Zu, I burn, Urgurazu, Zu, I burn, Ksuhurazu, I slip, Zu. Uh, on the other hand, 33, Al Kuraza, I laugh, which is active, it's Za. Ksuhurazu, I skate, the same verb as slip, Ksuhura, but this, uh, in this case, it's Za, I skate, I, I, slip, I slip deliberately. 
Uh, there is hierarchical person number agreement, uh, person number agreement and the verb. Uh, in, uh, it occurs in Lak Dagic languages, Tabasara, Nudi, and Bats, P to a lesser degree in some of our Ambic languages. Uh, it was it is known in some other Ambic languages. Um, it's hierarchical, um, uh, roughly hierarchical. So first and second persons um, are higher than the third person with many intricate details. It will be the topic of Nina Sumbatova's uh, December um, uh, next uh, next lecture, which which will be Nina Sumbatova's. So, for example, in luck, uh, I beat him Naga Attara Ra because uh, Ra is the first uh, first singular because there is I. He beats me again Ra Ganalna Attara, but he beats him Ganalga Attai. Uh, there is here uh, third singular. So. Uh, the first uh, the first singular marker is used whenever the first uh, roughly whenever the first person is, uh, is there among the among the major arguments. Uh, so it's not it's not ergative. It's uh, hierarchically oriented uh, grammatical mechanism of person number agreement uh, in languages where it is present. Uh, another sort of deviation from ergative uh, pattern is by absolutive construction. It's cleft like construction, cleft. It's something like it is John who left. In English, cleft uh, occurs when something like main clause denotes uh, focus, some, something which resembles subordinate clause denotes uh, the topic with analytical verb forms. In Archie, for example, Buvamo Huali Barshibi. It's an analytical form with convert barshi do, uh, doing B is the auxiliary, uh, which agrees with the bread in the, in the third class uh, 35. In 36, buva huali barshi di, it's by absolutive construction. Mother is an absolute, is an absolutive, uh, like bread is an absolutive. Barshi agrees with bread, with the internal absolutive and d agrees with the external absolutive with a with a subject uh, mother mother uh, the by absolutive cons uh, there are uh, many wo many works on uh, by absolutive construction in various uh, east Caucasian languages uh, in fact it uh, it would deserve a separate lecture by absolutive constructions in uh, in east Caucasian. The by absolutive construction 36 uh, topicalizes A and marks the VP with focus. So according to uh, Alexander Kibrick, 36 is something like an answer to a question, what is mother doing? Uh, so Hwali Barshi is baking bread is uh, in the focus in this case. Accusative marking in Udi, it's another well-known deviation from negative system. Uh, a, tri a tripartite alignment system in the Udi language, which was discovered as early as 1904 by Ado Adolf Dier, um, the same Adolf Dier. Uh, personal pronouns, human proper names, and definite non human noun phrases are marked with dative, not absolutive, as direct object. So it's it's like Aliken Shuyane Aki, Alex Soeber, examples by Dmitry Ganinkov's paper. Alex Soeber, bear is unmarked. What you see as ne is the clitic, uh, personal clitic. It's not the accusative marker, but Re Yan Aki Yan Alika, we didn't see Alik today. Alika is in dative. It's sort of accusative. Uh, dative uh, performing the role of accusative, it marks the direct uh, direct object. Uh, okay, but it's a tripartite alignment system. Uh, is uh, to my knowledge uh, has been uh, found only in Udi, but in Udi in Udi it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's well known. Yes. Uh, okay. Lack of ergative versus absolutive contrast with first and second person pronouns. It's a, a great typological puzzle why uh, why first and second person pronouns are the least likely to be marked as transitive subjects, to be marked with something like ergative. Uh, across languages, it, it can be seen in many languages other than East Caucasian, like Australian languages. So it's uh, 39 Bishtan, 
there are ergative and uh, ergative forms which coincide with absolutive, like do I, me, you, singular, ile, we, mi, je, you, plural. In Kvarshi, uh, a language which, which rather close, which is genetically rather close, closely related to Beshta, it's uh, also um, belongs to the Cezic branch, it's Kvarshi. There we see ergative forms of personal pronouns of the first and second person. Absolutive da, I, ma, you, ila, we, mija, you, plural. Ergative forms de, mi, ili, miji. Uh, e is a negative marker in Kvarshi, so it's, uh, it looks much like a rather recent development. Now, uh, about uh, role dominated languages, the idea of uh, Alexander Evgenievich Kibrik. It's uh, a long standing problem with negativity. Many languages that display negativity uh, phenomenon. Uh, negative absolutive alignment disagrees with structure in terms of grammatical relations or hierarchy of phrasal categories. This problem, uh, the first influential uh, attempt to solve this problem was Steven Anderson's uh, uh, 1976 paper on, um, about, uh, about um, on the notion of subject in negative languages, it was called, and uh, Anderson showed that, uh, yes, uh, negative absolutive alignment disagrees with uh, grammatical relations. Um, so it's something like uh, superficial morphological phenomenon, but in East Caucasian languages, the situation is somewhat more difficult because there is no passive voice. Uh, the roles are mapped more or less uniformly. Uh, no passive voice, which uh, switches the relationships, but uh, the, uh, switches the correspondence between grammatical relations and roles. Very few, if any at all, grammatical characteristics other than case and gender number agreement show a symmetrical orientation like subject versus object, negative versus absolutive, noun phrase versus verb phrase, which was noted by Kibik in his, in his works of uh, 1970s and 19, uh, 1980s. Uh, so the Kibik's idea was that uh, negativity is um, a uh, reflection of role, dom uh, role domination. Uh, they are role dominated languages and uh, um, morphological and syntactic mechanisms are oriented directly at roles or hyper roles like absolutive and agent and the students hyper roles in his view. And there is no, no need of intermediate level like subject and object, like grammatical relations. And in fact, there are some indications that uh, there are no, uh, uh, there are less grammatical asymmetries in the in East Caucasian than in languages uh, of the standard average European. For example, in Kvarshi, uh, the facts were known to Kibrik like this, effects like this in Kvarshi. Uh, reflexive pronouns can, can uh, work uh, both ways. Uh, direct object can be anteceded, direct object uh, reflexive can be anteceded by subject and uh, the other way around. Rasuli is Rasul doesn't have, does no harm to himself, 41b and for, uh, 41a and 41b, Rasul is Sijuch Kwariduwate, Rasul does no harm to himself, literally himself does not harm to Rasul. Um, no uh, asymmetrical orientation of reflexes. Lack of orientation with ellipses, uh, also noted by Kibrik. In fact, the uh, example is Kibrik's. Uh, 42, the boy looked at his brother and left, uh, which may also deno uh, mean uh, the boy looked at his brother and his brother left. Same in Kvarshi, 43, the boy beat his brother and ran away, which may also mean the boy beat his brother and his brother ran away. Uh, another lack of orientation ellipses with um, uh, with uh, purpo uh, purpose, something like purpose uh, converbs in luck. I came to God, my mother. 
uh, mother to God, I came. So I uh, can be uh, deleted in the subordinate clause, but it can also be deleted. Uh, uh, but um, uh, subject can be deleted, but direct object can also be deleted. I came to be guided by my mother. No, no restrictions here. 44B. A linear precedence, precedence may be sufficient for an NP to be pronounced antecedent. There are examples in Kvarshi, for example, like Avsi Ujalo Indu, Ju, Televisor Kul, Gitsanagoti. In this boy's room, he's watching TV. He may denote the boy. Against uh, Tanya Reinhardt's uh, examples, uh, in her, um, uh, her aim was to uh, show, uh, to demonstrate that, to show that. Um, linear precedence matters little with the nephro, and uh, what is more, uh, what really matters is uh, structural asymmetry uh, in form of uh, constituent, what she called constituent command or C command. So near him, then so a snake, uh, it's impossible for him and then to denote the same person. Uh, uh, in forty six B near then he saw a snake. He cannot be uh, antecedent of Dan. Uh, in, in spite of that, Dan occurs. The antecedent occurs to the left of the of the pronoun. But this is uh, this is possible in Kvarshi, as, as we can see, if, as we can see from forty five. So the test for structural asymmetry fails, which may mean that there is no structural asymmetry of this kind. That uh, in fact. Uh, hmm. Uh, he uh, uh, is not uh, structurally uh, has no structural priority over uh, over um, this boy in forty five of the form we are accustomed to in other languages. Same in example forty seven. Muhammad is machine is in Rika. He drove Muhammad's car. Uh, he and Muhammad made you know the same person again. Uh, the a linear precedence may be uh, enough for a, a nominal antecedent to, to antecede a, a, a pronoun. But cases of subject oriented nephra can also be found in some languages. In Avar, for example, reflexive is subject oriented, like in Russian, like it is in Russian, uh, or, in, uh, or to a lesser degree in English. In English, uh, it's uh, somewhat more complicated. Uh, like Rasul wrote himself down in the list, Rasul it's possible the other way around, like it's possible in Kvarshian or in some Andic languages, but it's, it's impossible in standard Avar. It's ungrammatical. 48, Rasul Jimtsagosiahaldakwana. Morphologically, it's possible to, to have uh, the reflexive pronoun in negative, uh, but uh, 48b is ungrammatical. So Kibrick's, uh, Kibrick's uh, uh, theory was uh, that uh, there, there are no grammatical relations in East Caucasian. In the East Caucasian languages, morphosyntactic marking of arguments directly maps roles or hyperroles, larger clusters of roles, of semantic or thematic roles. And there is no need in an intermediate level of grammatical relations. Uh, much like uh, Van Wallen, Robert Van Wallen and William Foley proposed uh, by the same year, uh, by the same 1980, role dominated. Uh, they claim that there are uh, they claim that there are, uh, may be uh, role dominated languages like Lakota, Tunica, Lakota, which is Tunica is Amerindian, Enga is uh, in New Guinea, Valbiri is in Australia. No grammatical relations and no, uh, no asymmetries found in these languages. This view is problematic because uh, first there are some uh, Kibrick uh, uh, mentioned them himself. There are some subject object asymmetries in Anaphora like 33 and not only in Anaphora. Moreover, there are lexical conversives, different mappings with the same roles, which can hardly be accounted for if there is no level of grammatical relations. Uh, there are uh, familiar pairs like uh, buy and sell 
yeah. or win and lose in these languages, conversive pairs. Uh, like uh, 49a, Archie Shubus by Otla Sel, or in Beshta Yiza win, you will lose, and the, and the like. There are conversive uh, pairs with light verbs. Like 15, Navar, Dandich, E Habize, do resistance, which means offer resistance to someone, versus Dandich, E Bihize, see resistance, which means meet resistance from someone. In fact, uh, Habize and Bihize are light verbs here. They hardly denote do or see in any literal sense. Uh, rather, they mean uh, they just are. Um, grammatical grammatical uh, elements to uh, used to uh, contain the inflectional uh, inflection marker markers of tense mood and so on Dan the a is resistance so offer resistance meet resistance are different in a var which probably would not be the uh, possible if uh, the language were consistently role dominated as Kibrick presented it uh, presented it in his work. Uh, there may be different approach uh, suggested in Ekaterina Lutikova's um, 2021 paper uh, on the on the basis of Quarshi, but I believe that uh, other languages can also can also be uh, used to substantiate the claim that. Uh, uh, well, it's somewhat it's somewhat uh, my version of Lutikova's idea. Uh, I'm I'm phrasing it in a different way, and uh, Lutikova bears no responsibility for the way I'm presenting the view here. So it's group prominence. Uh, there are group. Uh, um, there is a group of prominent uh, arguments: subject, high-ranking objects, uh, uh, NPs. Uh, which include NP in absolutive, intransitive subject, and transitive object. Subjects in oblique cases, like ergative and dative, uh, which uh, versus other non-absolutive objects, and NPs in, post in postpositional phrases, and so on. This uh, group of uh, prominent arguments, uh, only they can antecede any force, uh, reflexives and reciprocals. Only they cannot antecede co-argument high-ranked pronominals, that is, pronominals of the same rank as themselves. In some constructions, uh, for example, in nominalized clauses, they can be replaced with genitive. Only they can be replaced with genitive. And they cannot be marked with, in quarshi, they cannot be marked with attributive, the form that produces, special form that produces modifiers. So, for example, in quarshi, anaphora, high-ranked dative experience as subject, can only mean she saw the girl, but it cannot mean the girl saw herself because dative experience is too high to, um, to, um, uh, to be anteceded by the absolute uh, antecedent cut girl. And, uh, but low ranked applicative dative object, the same case in dative, but applicative dative object can be ifil chorpalaila. It can be anteceded by subject, like in um, 52, the girl cooked her a soup, which may be also the girl cooked herself a soup. So if you, uh, usual pronominal, can be, can be anteceded by can be because the dative object, uh, applicative dative object is uh, low. It does not belong to the privileged group. Low enough to be anteceded by subject and act. In quarshi nominalizations, as was shown by Lutikova, high-ranking experience a dative subject, for example, can be um, expressed with genitive. Uh, can uh, can be um, uh, can be expressed with genitive, not only not only with dative. So dilgokha patimatel or patimates ishayak vano. I am glad that patimatsu mother. Uh, I am glad with patimats seeing mother. So patimat is. Uh, the dative experience a dative with a verb to see it can be um, marked with not not with not only with dative but also with genitive. Low ranking recipient dative object cannot be uh, marked with uh, genitive in the nominalization. So dilgok haishati patimatel titnu kunta and let that mother gave patimat the dress. Uh, what is interesting about this is that uh, I'll return to that group prominence idea. 
that uh, this um, uh, distinction between two groups of arguments, one is privileged and another is not, uh, does not involve the difference within the negative versus absolutive uh, system of alignment. Both negative subject and absolutive object and absolutive subject belong to the privileged argument group. Maybe um, in uh, East Caucasian languages, uh, this idea deserves further, further in the, uh, test and investigation. Maybe uh, grammatical asymmetries, um, maybe grammatical asymmetries uh, um, uh, involve uh, several uh, involve several uh, a group uh, a group of several privileged arguments uh, within which we can see distinctions uh, of negative and absolutive subject and object. So that's all. Here's the list of references. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, th thank you for the talk. Uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm so sorry for all the problems uh, with my sound uh, in the beginning. Do you hear me now? Okay, I, I really hope that you hear me now. Uh, so uh, now I will share my screen uh, with um, uh, the list of questions. Uh, and I will make it a bit bigger. Uh, okay, when I when I said that by absolutive construction is cleft like, I meant only that it is for, that it formally resembles uh, resembles a cleft. Because uh, um, if we take the functions of cleft or pseudo cleft in English. Uh, it is John who left, or the one who left is John. Uh, the function is obviously very different from uh, from bi uh, the biabsolutive construction in uh, East Caucasian. Now, Michael uh, Michael Daniel, what is in here is the relation between Patimatova's passive and the synthetic and intentional agent construction. Um, I don't know. Uh, my my answer is I don't know. Uh, unintentional agent constructions, uh, to my knowledge, they are only intransitive. It's something like uh, unintentional. I unintentionally, uh, I unintentionally cried. Something like that. I'm aware of no example. Maybe, maybe, maybe there are examples of uh, usual unintentional. Uh, construction with transitive agents, something like I unintentionally uh, burnt uh, the house uh, when I would be in the locative case, but I know, uh, I know no such examples. Uh, so uh, the problem is this uh, uh, Magomedov's, not uh, Patimatis, her name, Magomedov's passive. Uh, is with transitive verb to like eat. Um, the, uh, the lexical verb is eat and only the light verb is go. It's something like the apple being eaten is gone. So it's rather rather transitive than intransitive. Ora Matushansky, why is ellipsis not an instance of prodrop? With the null probe being able to pick its reference from the preceding context. Uh, uh, yes, it may be an instance of prodrop. Uh, yes, true, true. Um, it's a, it's a, it, it may it, it may be it may be regarded as prodrop uh, because um, well. Um, we don't know, in fact, we don't know exactly 
Um, speaking of prodrop, we mean uh, operation which involves uh, which involves uh, NPs or DPs uh, only, and uh, this this elliptical uh, operation seems to seems to uh, involve also non-nominal constructions. Uh, but in, in fact, I don't know uh, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, is possible to uh, whether it's better to um, regard as a case of prodrop. Uh, there are many. There are many. Um, for me, prodrop is a very uh, vague phenomenon. For example, I don't know. Where, I, I know that there there seems to be there seem to be no prodrop in English. There seem to be. There seems uh, there seems to be a prodrop in Italian, for example, but I don't know whether it is prodrop in Russian. Uh, Sara Dupirava, going back to when you were discussing the idea of focus, I wonder if you could explain again examples 20, uh, 35 and 36, how the examples differ from each other and what uh, this contrast demonstrates. Uh, well, um, in this, uh, I think the point was agent is absolute is marked is out of focus is topical uh, is absolutive to the question yes yes Ante Petrovich's uh, uh, answer is, is is right yes the explanation is uh, I agree Igul Zakirova on the generalization that the preceding NP can be an antecedent of a pronominal structure should be impossible I wonder if all demonstratives can get the reference this way can it be that the abundance of demonstratives helps to disambiguate? Well, it, it may be so because demonstratives, well, demonstratives when used uh, anaphorically, uh, they, in, in East Caucasian demonstratives are often used anaphorically and uh, they are normally restricted, like uh, mana in Sakur, for example, which is a demonstrative. Well, like in English, when there are examples like uh, them and these are uh, different because uh, these cannot be anteceded in many cases. Uh, these flowers are too expensive for me to buy them as possible. These flowers are too expensive for me to buy these. To my knowledge, it's impossible. Yes, there are many demonstratives and being used, uh, being used uh, as uh, uh, being used anaphorically, they can get the reference uh, the necessary reference, but um, for some languages, for, um, including Varshi, it's it's not very easy to distinguish between pronominals and demonstrative. Uh, in the, the girls of her example, to where the end does the dative experiences signal involuntarily seeing, catching sight of. Yes, it is uh, seeing is involuntarily. Uh, it's uh, it's see, uh, not look exactly. You have mentioned peripheral uses of negative case, such as coding the instrument source, etc. Are there any Nagdagistan languages where the direct object can be coded by a negative case, as well as A? Is there any evidence of double oblique transitive alignment? Uh, when direct objects can be coded by uh, well, maybe in some Dagic anti passives, direct. Uh, I don't remember exactly. In some uh, Dagic anti passives, if, if I'm not mistaken, direct objects can be coded by ergatives. Yes, in Dagic. But in that case, uh, the transitive subject is coded by. Absolutive. So it's not the, if you if you are interested of double oblique alignment. Um, I, I haven't seen double oblique alignment in these languages, but I should have. I should have probably said something about antipassives too, Dagic antipassives too. Uh, in Archie, I think you said that what I do is transitive in terms of its internal structure, so it has negative subject, but it functions as intransitive. Do we ever find the opposite situation? Something is intransitive. In terms of internal structure, but end up being able to take direct object. Uh, uh, I don't know such cases like victorious become being used to meet defeat because because uh, in East Caucasian direct objects usually 
presuppose uh, uh, significant involvement. So um, in most cases, they, they presuppose uh, significant involvement of something. Defeat, um, someone who is defeated is uh, usually marked by a uh, locative. I don't know such cases really. Uh, yes. Tibetan locativity was also analyzed as passive in traditional Sanskritic Indic grammars. Uh, yes, yes, very, uh, it's it's um, well, it's um, what can what could be expected because uh, something uh, something um, which is um, unknown uh, is uh, is for, uh, can first be accounted for by means of. Uh, notions that are already known. Actually, in a gentle passive constructions like Rome was conquered by the Visigoths, the agent is dramatic and focused while the patient is thematic. Well, uh, probably pity means uh, the Langeka's approach to passive uh, shared by uh, shared by Shibatani and uh, uh, um, uh, promoted in Plungian's uh, um, uh, general morphology and uh, semantic of um, grammatical categories, the idea of defocusing as semantics of passive. Well, defocusing in Langeka's uh, understanding, uh, so, far as I, so far as I can see, has nothing to do with focus, uh, which is rheumatic. It's something, it's some different focus, focus of discourse or Maybe I don't just understand. In fact, I, I think that passive uh, in general has no meaning. Also in, in different languages, it can, it, can, it can mean different things. Ligate uh, and others propose some diagnostics to distinguish pass, passive and impersonal agent constructions in Turkish. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Well, yes, yes. There may be different diagnostics. It uh, much depends on on the model for on the grammatical model which is used, and on the uh, definitions that are adopted. Uh, because uh, in any grammatical model, um, you need some form of understanding how uh, active, passive, or impersonal work. So, so it may be different, of course. Probably egophoric agreement would also be worth mentioning, together with other types of deviations in agreement, accusative based at least in Mehweb. Well, it uh, egophoric agreement probably is uh, like uh, like all sorts of personal agreement. Uh, it doesn't involve uh, the problems of negativity, so it. I hope it will be covered in uh, Nina's lecture in a week. On binding, Katerina Lutikova, I think we have to distinguish between co-indexing and semantic binding. Examples like in this boy's room, he's watching TV, are compatible with co-indexing. Uh, what such examples violate is condition C under reconstruction. Uh, well, it's true, but although I can't exactly see what semantic binding has to do here. It's co-indexing, but, no, but no semantic binding to my knowledge because it's not a context for semantic uh, where semantic binding can be can be can reveal itself. In fact, in some languages, unintentional limited to lab to label verbs allowed to the best of my knowledge. Uh, in fact, uh, unintentional constructions are badly understood in East Caucasian. And uh, if someone knows good work, good descriptions of unintentionals. Uh, in East Caucasian, uh, I will be happy to know to know such works. Uh, while I while I prepared myself to this talk, I found that, in fact, very little is known about unintentionals. Uh, when unintentional agents are marked with locatives like possessive. Uh, Russian seems to have a topic drop like Germanic languages and to a lesser extent English. Uh, yes. I know Igor Cedric's work. Uh, in fact, um, uh, said, uh, in, said, uh, in Cedric's works, there, there are many examples like uh, like uh, prodrop is necessary, 
uh, uh, is necessary um, uh, prodropped uh, subject is bound uh, in subordinate clauses in Russian, which is obviously wrong. It's, uh, the material isn't, isn't convincing there. There is paper by Gennikov and myself on unintentional agents in East Caucasian, if not mistaken. Uh, it would be it would be great if, uh, if uh, it's great if such paper exists. I just I just don't know. Or oh, Inago, Kimus Inago. Anyway, anyway, it's very it's very it, it, it's. Um, It's topic which which only uh, part which is only partly. Um, in fact, we don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, Beninkov and myself did, did this for Agu, but uh, for most languages, uh, I don't know uh, with what kinds of verbs unintentional unintentional agents or unintentional uh, unintentional agents can be used at all. Is it all? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Yakov Georgievich. Um, uh, now I'd like to thank everyone for participating and for asking questions. Uh, we hope uh, to see you again next week uh, and the lecture on uh, person agreement by Nina Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.